Hey everyone, it's Justin. Thank you for watching and welcome to Justin's house. Today we're looking at data management again, but instead of deleting records, we're going to update records. So let's get started. This is going to be uh, a different kind of use case. And what I'm going to start with is going to the base task table, right? So I'm just going to go task.list. If you don't know that, um, there's a record type in service now called task. And then a lot of things in service now are extended from that task table. So if you have incident, incident task, changes, problems, anything pretty much on any application kind of assigned to you, um, you can get to a view of all of those things by coming in here to the task table and typing in your name. I'm gonna type in able tutor and you can see the multiple different kinds of task types. We'll go ahead and group by that. He's got 88 different tasks assigned to him across the different applications. So look at here on the left-hand side, I've got business application requests, certification, evidence requests, event tasks, risk acceptance, right? And so my use case here is what if he left and we need to reassign all of these different kind of tasks to somebody else? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click this header, go to data management and update all of them with a preview. So this is like the delete all with preview, but instead of deleting the records, we're just gonna change the assigned to to someone else instead of able tutor. So notice it brings in my condition that I had filtered on. So I can see that we're pulling in just the stuff that's assigned to able and I'm going to change the assigned to field. So let's look for that here, assigned to, and we're gonna change it to, let's just uh, do system administrator for, for uh, illustration purposes. But potentially if able left, we wanna resign all these tasks to whoever replaces able tutor. And now I'm gonna go ahead and save that. And we'll have a record of the data maintenance record you can see here of updating all the different tasks to and changing that assigned to. Um, now what's funny is I'm expecting to see a preview and I don't have a preview like we did on the delete. So that's interesting. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and just hit execute now. And we'll figure out together how this is gonna look because I am not getting a preview to see what's gonna be impacted. Um, I'm just checking to make sure I'm not missing anything. Uh, preview condition. Okay, we got 88 records that we already know because we were just on the task list matching that condition. So let's go ahead and hit execute and see what this looks like. We get a warning that it's going to update all the records that match that search criteria, which is 88 records we just saw with the preview. So I'm gonna go ahead and proceed. And there's my status of that progress worker actually running that. So we'll see how long this takes. Okay, it looks like it finished. I'm gonna put over here on next to my head, just like we did on the last one, how long I actually cut out of that but it's completed. So we're going to go check the execution results and we should see, I'm hoping something similar to what we saw with the delete records. We're going to see all the impacted records or the records that were updated based on the, the changes we made. Um, this is a good sign. So I am getting some links around rollback. Uh, so we're going to be able to view what was impacted. So the rollback context, and then I do want to actually roll this back, even though this is my PDI and it's all demo data, not a big deal um, there. So let's go ahead and check view rollback context and I want to see basically what records actually got impacted. So there are 280 updates. Wow. So I made a list of 88 tasks, but that resulted in 280 up or records being updated and changes, uh, incremental data changes to our 507 of them. So and it recorded the old value, the new value. So if you think about things, if there's business rules running when the assigned to changes, um, then it's keeping track of what those business rules actually did. This is pretty fascinating. Again, I didn't script any of this. I'm just clicking on links and changing what I want. So let's go back to that list of tasks of things that are assigned to able. Should be zero. That's right. That's right. Um, I'm going to go ahead and search now for those that are assigned to system administrator. It's probably going to be more than 88 because um, there were probably tasks already assigned to system administrator. Um, but it looks like, uh, let's get rid of this group by uh, ungroup, and we should get a total count. There's 127 things uh, currently assigned to system administrator. So let's go ahead and roll it back, and we should see able tutor get put back as the, um, as the assigned to on this. So there's my execute rollback, and we're just going to type in yes to confirm. Click OK. It's interesting that they make us type in yes on the rollback, but they just give us a warning, yes or no, on the actual execution or the updating. And same with the delete job that we did there. All right, that didn't take very long at all, so we'll click close there. 
and that should refresh the page and uh, we'll actually get to see what that looks like. So it rolled it back. I want to go to the uh, task list again and we'll search for task assigned to um, Able and we should be back to the 88. Let me ungroup these. Yeah, it's 88 right there at the top. I forgot that uh, Tokyo gave us this new um, summary here on grouping, but I'll just ungroup this real quick and we should see we're back to Able Tutor being assigned to all those records, even though we did a bulk update changing it all to system administrator. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please like, please subscribe, or share it with somebody who you think might be interested in making bulk updates in ServiceNow without writing code when without scripting. And until next time, don't forget to always be learning.